A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Silver! Charlie Pike ran the trading post in the heart of Indian country. It was a convenient stopping place for pioneers heading into the Southwest Territory. Most wagon trains stopped at Pike's Post. When Sam Jackson came into the region to take charge of Indian affairs, he called on Charlie Pike for first-hand information. You see, Mr. Pike... Oh, just call me Charlie. All right, Charlie. Now, tell me what I can do for you. You need supplies such as blankets, beads, or pottery? Got a fine supply of Indian pottery here. No, thanks. These blankets are first rate. They're made by Injun Joe Cricket and his people down in the valley. Sell a lot of these to pioneers. No, I, I And nights want... get downright cold around these here parts. A man could do with an extra blanket. Charlie, I don't want to buy any of your Indian blankets or pottery. How about some canned goods? Looky here now. I just got a fresh shipment of tinned tomatoes and some oysters and a lot of other first-class victuals from the east. I don't want to buy a thing. I'm just looking for information. Yeah. Uh... Mr. Jackson, if you're going to be in charge of Indian affairs in these parts, you can do with a lot of supplies. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sell you this whole kit and caboodle. You mean the trading post? The post and everything in it, locked, stock, and barrel. I'll sell out cheap. Two bits in the dollar. Why? Well, I... I want to pull stakes. Why? Well, see, I'm getting on in years. Trouble in the air? No, I wouldn't say there was. Let's have the true facts, Charlie. The government sent me out here because of a lot of rumbling. Uh, rumbling? I understand there are four different groups of Indians living within a day's ride of this trading post. Sooner or later, two or more of these tribes are going to start a war. I might as well lay the cards on the table, Jackson. You're right. There is going to be a war in this part of the country. And it's going to be a suck dollager. No telling how far it'll spread or how big it'll grow. Is that so? I thought these were small tribes. They, they are. All four are small outfits, but each one has a lot of friends. Uh, Jackson, how did you know there was likely to be trouble in these parts? Someone who knows these Indians sent word to Washington. Hmm. I wonder who that could be. Well, I was told it was a man who was known as the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? I've heard of him. Charlie, why are these Indians likely to go to war? Well, I'll tell you... Each one of the four outfits needs something another tribe has got. For example, White Eagle and his hunters have a lot of game. 
more than they can use for food. Mm. Osaka, the corn planter, has a lot of corn and wheat. What's more, Osaka has good drinking water on his open farmland there. Mm. Those two are feuding all the time. White Eagle's hunters spoil the farm crops and the corn planters plow up the rangeland. What about the tribes to the south? Well, Injun Joe's people have a lot of cash they got for selling their handiwork. They can buy food and most everything else they need, except in good homes. Now, Mingo's people, they live in cliffs, caves in the cliffs. They've got good, substantial homes, but they're short on food. Can't they buy food here? Not without cash, and they're short on cash. That is, they were, until a couple of days ago. It's what's got me worried. How's that? Omingo well, came in here with a sizable bundle of cash, bought a lot of tin goods. I've got a hunch he didn't come by that cash honestly. Yeah, there's an Indian drawing rain up in front. Which tribe does he belong to? Uh, that's, uh, that's Injun Joe Cricket. Looks like he's got a wagon load of rugs his people have made. This will be your chance to meet him. Fine. He looks like an intelligent Indian. He sure is. He is. Hi there, Joe. Me want talk. Hey, you look like you're geared for trouble. What's wrong? Me ask question. You answer straight. Oh, sure, sure. Let, let go of my shirt. You don't need to get rough with me. Uh, I want to introduce you. You listen. Mr. Huh? Mingo come here last two, three day. That right? Uh, Mingo? Yeah, he was here. Sure, he was here. Well, what about it? Him spend money. Gold money. That right? Well, now, I... You answer yes, no. Now, see here, Joe. You can't get Quiet. rough. Quiet. Don't mix into this, Mr. Jackson. Injun Joe... He won't hurt me. Answer question, me not hurt. Mingo spend gold money? Yes, yes, that's right, Joe. That but... prove him steal money. No, no. Him steal plenty money from my people. Him come in night like serpent. Steal gold from hiding place, then sneak away. Oh, now, Indian Joe, you don't want to go make an accusation. You give like... Mingo message when him come here look for son. When he comes here looking for his son? What makes me you think... Me capture Mingo's son. Me got son wagon under rug. Him tied, gagged. Great day. Mingo I... bring money I... back in two moon. Son go free. Him not bring back money in two moon. Son die. You tell Mingo. Great Scott. Oh, wait. Wait, Indian Joe. You can't do that. You you... Oh, well, I can my. stop that Indian. Take the boy away from him. No, no. Don't do that, Mr. Jackson. Don't do it. Don't you interfere. <laughs> If you interfere, the whole of Injun Joe Cricket's tribe will attack this trading post. But what'll happen next? I'll tell you what'll happen, Jackson. There'll be war. When Injun Joe Cricket returned to the people in his village and halted his wagon, he found an Indian dressed in buckskins waiting for him. How, Tano? The Indian was not a member of the tribe. It was a man Joe Cricket had known in the past. His name was Toto, and he was a friend of the Lone Ranger. Many moon go by, Tano, since last time we meet. That right. People in village say you lose plenty money. Chief Mingo steal gold. Oh. And what you do? Come back wagon, you see. Me find 16-year-old boy on trail. Him son, Chief Mingo. Me capture. Look. Oh. This boy, son of Chief Mingo? That's right, Tano. Me capture, tie, gag him. Now hold him prisoner until Mingo bring back stolen gold. This may be start war. Chief Mingo want war. My people not afraid. We fight, maybe win war. Maybe win strong houses where Mingo people live. Me... Tano! Where you go? Me got long ride. Travel past. Me friend. Easy, Tom. Easy. In a month's come. While Tonto had been keeping an eye on the Indian south of the trading post, the Lone Ranger had camped on a hillside far to the north where he could watch the wooden houses and the crops of Chief Osaka in the distant valley, and at the same time, keep an eye on the woods where White Eagle's hunters lived. The masked man was stirred from chores about the camp when Silver whinnied sharply. What is it, The powerful Silver? white stallion was looking toward the south. 
The masked man turned in that direction and saw his faithful companion, Toto, riding uphill at top speed. It's Toto. He's riding hard. I wonder if trouble has broken out between those two tribes south of the trading post. Hi, Kimasabi! Toto! What is it? What brings you here at such speed? Trouble come, plenty soon. Between Joe Cricket and the cliff dwellers? That's right. Tell me about it. Well, Joe Cricket and his people have money hidden in good place. Someone come in night and steal it. Toto told the Lone Ranger about the theft of money by the leader of the cliff dwelling Indians and the capture of his son by Joe Cricket as hostage. The masked man was quick to grasp the significance of this move. Toto, it means war. That's right. Mingo can't return that money without losing face. To return it would be an admission of his guilt. Him not return money. Son get killed. I'll saddle Silver right away and head south. And what you do there? I don't know. We'll talk to Joe Cricket and Mingo. See if we can't bring them together on a friendly basis. I may have more success than I've had up here. You try to bring White Eagle and Osaka together? Yes, I've tried, but they're bitter enemies. Ah, uh, me no. The situation between White Eagle and Osaka, just like those of those feuds between the cattlemen and homesteaders. Me savvy. The hunters claim that the range is spoiled and the buffalo and antelope driven away when land is plowed for planting crops. Osaka feels that his people have a right to that land. They build houses and settle there with their families. You think war break out here? It's likely. But it seems to be more imminent down south. I... Oh, Mr. What that, Kimasabi? War cries. <laughs> steady, Silver, steady, boy. Kimasabi, look at edge of woods. White Eagle's hunters, they're breaking out of cover. Them ride plenty hard. Them head for farmer Indians. Tonto, it looks like an attack on Osaka's village. And what we do? We do what we can to help Osaka. Hit that saddle and follow me. Easy, 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 easy follow. One, two, three. and his hunters swept out of the woods to attack the small houses of Osaka's village. The Lone Ranger and Tonto joined the fight on the side of the corn planters, but there was little they could do. White Eagle's men fought with a torch, setting fire to building after building. As soon as every house was burned, White Eagle shouted a command. And his men rode away as quickly as they had come. Osaka cried loudly in his rage, but the fires were beyond control. Osaka, hear what I say. You good friend of Indian, you fight hard, but that not stop fire. Be glad your people are alive. Those hunters had good weapons. They could have wiped you out if they had wanted to. Here we not be many, but Osaka got many friends. Many other tribe of Indians come here. Then Osaka will be strong get revenge, then we attack White Eagle. Osaka, if you make war, your people will perish. We, my people, die anyway. We cannot build new home without much wood. Osaka, you can trade with White Eagle. He wants water from your streams. He wants corn and wheat from your fields. For these, he will give you wood from his forest. White Eagle is enemy. We not trade with enemy. We die first. Perhaps I can help you in another way. You cannot give us home. Give me until tomorrow at sunrise to find out. Tomorrow, sunrise? Give me your word to make no move toward war before then. Uh, is given. Good. Paro, come with me. Steady, big fellow. Easy. Easy, One, two, three. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. War drums throbbed and Indians chanted as they danced around a council fire in a vast cavern. The dance was led by Chief Mingo. His face was grim. He hated war, but his honor and the life of his son were at stake. Presently, a guard came to his side and whispered a few words. Mingo nodded and moved to the entrance of the cave. There on a shelf which overlooked the valley, he saw two men he knew as friends. How, Chief Mingo? How, Tonto? How, my friend? Chief Mingo, you prepare for war. Long years of peace have come to end. You are to fight the valley tribe. Joe Cricket, capture son. But you stole Joe Cricket's money. My people hungry. First duty of chief is to people. Your people are hungry because you built homes here in the cliffs where you could neither hunt nor plant crops. The Lone Ranger persuaded Mingo to call off the war dance and hand over what was left of the stolen gold. Then he and Tonto mounted and hurried to the village of Joe Cricket. Tonto was hailed by the Indian chief, and the masked man was presented as a trusted friend. Cricket, I have gold to hand you in exchange for your prisoner. Son of Mingo? Yes. Me hear war drums from cliffs. The war dance has been called off. Mingo is going to leave the cliffs as soon as his son is by his side. You say him leave cliffs? Yes. My people always want homes like Cliff Dweller. Maybe I can get them for you. Tano, your friend mean what him say. That right. Make no move until you hear from me. When me here? Within a day or so. Now, here's your gold. Release your prisoner. Ah, me go get him. Ana, me! Tano, you wait here until the son of Chief Mingo is brought to you. Ah. Take the boy to his father. Then lead Mingo to Osaka's crops by the western trail. You not go? I'm going to start for Osaka's village at once. I'll have Osaka bring his people to the cliffs by the eastern trail. Me savvy. Said he, Silver. Mingo's people will be going north as Osaka is coming south. I want them to travel on different trails so they'll not meet. Said he, easy, big fellow. One there. A daring plan had taken form in the Lone Ranger's mind. It was a plan by which he hoped to bring about an understanding that would mean peace for all four tribes. He found Chief Osaka, the corn planter, waiting eagerly when he returned to the village of burned out homes. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, silly big fella. You come back quick. Me not look for you till next day. Easy, silly big fella. Osaka, I bring good news. Uh, you say maybe find my people new place to live. I found it. Now you won't have to trade with White Eagle, and you won't need to go to war. Tell your people to prepare at once to leave for homes that are ready and waiting. Where are these homes? In the cliffs to the south. That's where Mingo people live. Mingo has no food. He and his people are leaving their homes. My people got plenty food. You can't take your crops. You'll have to leave them. Take plenty dry corn, plenty wheat. Take plenty food from last harvest. Then prepare to go at once. Go by the eastern trail through Big Moon Pass. Ah, uh, me no. Good luck to you. Steady, easy, big fella. One, two, three. The masked man hurried to the hills and watched until he saw Osaka and his people with all the goods that had survived the fire together with their mules and horses leave their crops and head south. Then once again he mounted the great horse Silver and headed for the woods. It took some time to find the clearing where White Eagle and his hunters and the families of those hunters lived. When finally he met the chief there was a lengthy conference. When it ended the masked man rode away to wait for further developments. It was late the following afternoon when Jackson, the government man, dismounted in front of the trading post. Whoa, whoa there, whoa boy, whoa. Charlie, Charlie Pike, where are you? Charlie. Hey, hey, what's the Sam Hills all the ruckus about? What's the trouble, Mr. Jackson? Well, I don't know, but you can be sure there's something in the air. I've been riding through the territory ever since daybreak. What about it? Joe Cricket and the people in the valley are talking about moving into the caves of Mingo. You don't say. Great day, that sounds like fighting is about to start. When do you hear the rest? Mingo isn't in the caves. What? His people have moved out. Osaka and the corn planters have taken over the caves. What? Where's Mingo? His people have settled where Osaka lived. What? When I left, they were heading for the woods to cut down trees to build new houses. Oh, no, no. What's White Eagle say about that? Well, I couldn't find him. How'd things get so shuffled up? How do I know? I just... Hey, hey, Mr. Jackson. Huh? L look, out through that door. Indians, three of them. They're coming here. It's White Eagle. What's he coming here for? I wish I knew. Yeah, there I... come some more of his braves. Where? Over there to the left. 
Aren't those White Eagle's men? Uh, oh, my sakes alive. No, that's Chief Mingo. Jackson, they're both heading here. They're going to make this their battleground. Hey, wh why don't you buy this trading post? I'll sell it awful cheap. If you have any guns, you better get them. We might need them. Yeah, I'll get some from the back room. Hurry, Charlie. They'll be here any minute. Oh, no. Now what's the matter? More Indians coming from the south. More? Joe Cricket and Osaka. And they've each got some of their people with them. Jackson, we'd better clear out. Oh, we'll be caught right in the middle of a battle royal. We can't clear out now. White Eagle's already dismounting. Come on, we'll go try to talk to him. Come on. All right. Now listen, White Eagle, if you... Oh, Charlie White. Where mask man. Huh? What mask man? Last sundown, him come. Make pow wow. Where? Tell White Eagle, come here. You mean a mask man sent you here? Uh. Why... Wonder if he sent the other chiefs here. Charlie's question soon was answered. Mingo and his companions had been asked by the masked man to come to the trading post. And a few moments later, Joe Cricket and Osaka arrived and dismounted. The four chiefs exchanged looks of uncertainty, and all were on their guard. But each had promised to come in peace to meet the masked man. Presently, a ringing cry came across the open plain. A white horse traveling fast came into view, followed by a hard-running paint. All four Indian leaders looked toward the oncoming rider, and each held up a hand in a gesture of friendly welcome. While Charlie Pike and Jackson watched with wide-eyed expressions, the Lone Ranger brought all four leaders into the trading post and seated them in a circle on the floor. I brought you chiefs together because I want to see how you like your new arrangements. Osaka, your people have moved to the cliffs. Plenty good. You took food with you. What are you going to do when it's gone? What, me too? Mingo, uh, your people have lots of crops that were planted by Osaka. What would you do for homes unless you can get wood from White Eagle? Do? White Eagle, you have more wood than you need. But you would like water that flows in such great quantities in the village where Mingo now lives. You would like fish from those streams and corn so your people could eat better. Uh, Joe Cricket, yeah. you have your gold. But what good is it to you, unless you can exchange it for food and home? Each one of you has more than he needs of some things. Osaka, you and White Eagle were enemies. You would not trade. But Mingo and the hunters will live in peace. Do you know why? Why, you say they'll live in peace? Mingo, will you let White Eagle's hunters have corn in exchange for game and water and fish from your streams? If he will trade wood to build your home? Ah, that good. What do you say about that, White Eagle? Be shake hand with Mingo. Hello. Great day. Look at them, too. Both of you can use better guns and ammunition. You can use many things that can be bought here in the trading post with gold. Why, then, don't you give some of the food and wood you can't use to Joe Cricket in exchange for gold? Osaka, your people know how to plant and grow good things. When the crops you planted have been used, there must be new crops. Why don't you share these crops with Mingo, who will pay for them by building homes for you? Then you can return to your own country, and Mingo can return to his cliffs with no worry about food. Son, not get in cave. Maybe like home in valley better. <laughs> Bit by bit, the Lone Ranger laid the simple facts before the Indians and made them realize that each tribe could live better and with more security by trading goods and services with others. Meanwhile, Charlie Pike displayed bright jewelry, bead shawls, binoculars, farming tools, steel knives, tobacco, and countless other items that could be secured by trade. How do you like those rifles, White Eagle? They will make your hunters mightier than ever. Uh, be like. Mingo! Your people are builders. Here are tools of iron and steel. Ah, good. Picks and spades to make it easy to break the ground. Here are plows, Osaka. So your people can plant five times as many crops. Fine, fine. All your people can live better if you exchange your goods and live in peace. Other tribes have other goods to trade. When many white men come here, they too will trade with you. They will have cows and goats and hogs to trade for horses and blankets. They will have gold and wagons to exchange for buffalo and antelope skins. They will bring doctors who can heal your wounds and cure the sick. Yes, 
There will be books and teachers to show you how to read them. Many great things are coming if you live in peace. The best things from all parts of this country can be yours by trade. But none can be won by war. War offers only pain and suffering and death. Do you want war or peace? <laughs> Great day. Look at them bringing out the peace pipes. Hey, boys, just a second. The tobacco for them pipes is on the house. <laughs> They're laughing. Those Indians are happy. I can return to Washington and report there'll be no war. Jackson, you can report that these four tribes have established a pattern for peace. It is a pattern for all nations of Indians to follow. It's a pattern that'll make this whole nation united. The day is coming when this country will be a leader in the world of nations, Jackson. Let us hope that our fundamental principles of peace and the exchange of goods and services may be a doctrine to wipe out all war and unite all nations. Do you really think that day will come? The people of this generation united our states. Their children, I am sure, will unite the world. Come, Toto. We're not needed here any longer. The next generation will unite the world. Huh? What's that, Jackson? Oh. Oh, Charlie. I... I was just quoting a lone ranger. One, two, three! One, two, three! This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.